Hello and welcome to another episode of the Move Forward Anyway podcast, featuring dream accelerating inspiration. As always, you can learn more about my dream accelerator coaching process at jeffmeyer.org. You can click on the Move Forward Anyway tab and watch all of these episodes in video form, or you can download wherever you like to get your podcasts from. I'm your host, author, entrepreneur, and coach, Jeff Meyer. Well, hello, fellow dreamers. And as I like to say, successful dreamers, regardless of where you're at in the process of pursuing your dream, I am so grateful to be here uh, today. Uh, Another episode with Elizabeth Polzine. Uh, Elizabeth, thank you so much for being with us today. Uh, Why don't you take a moment just to introduce yourself to, to my audience? Sure. Thanks again for having me, Jeff. It's exciting to visit with you today about my dream. Um, I am a Missouri native, uh, come to Wisconsin just a a couple years ago. I am a wife to a pastor uh, who currently serves a congregation here in Milwaukee. I am a mother to two little ones. I have a five-year-old boy, three-year-old girl, um, church member, as you can imagine, a lot of other things going on outside of life. And then I also work full-time at Concordia University, Wisconsin in Ann Arbor, uh, where I serve as a professor and I, an administrator as well. So plenty of things on my plate to keep me busy on a regular basis. And you have time in all of that to pursue a dream? Come on. <laughs> that That's exactly what occurred to me when I enrolled <laughs> Accelerator workshop. What's a dream? I'm a full-time mom, full-time worker. You know, do we have dreams? <laughs> Kids sleeping through the night, getting our job yeah. done. But um, what are what are those dreams exactly? So that's been kind of fun to um, think through and and play with. Like personally, what are things that I want to accomplish or do? Yeah, you came to the you came to the Dream Accelerator with a with a dream to become an author, not really necessarily the dream to be an author, Mm -hmm. but the dream to produce a book that would be a benefit to the world. And you came with that dream pretty, pretty well intact. You had a pretty good idea of what you wanted to do. Why don't you talk a little bit about uh, the book? Uh, Where are you at currently in the process of writing it? Sure. So I've got um, a a pretty solid draft of the book completed, which has taken uh, a a decent amount of time to get there. Um, I'm not an author. I I wouldn't consider myself an author. I will be someday because that's that's the goal. But um, my background is not in writing. But my my dream really started from my own experience with my children. Um, So I did not grow up in a Lutheran circle. And one of the things I came to understand as part of the Lutheran faith, just personally, was the concept of vocation and that um, God calls us into many different roles in life to serve and how God works through humans to serve others. Um, And I just think that that was such a freeing understanding for me. And I wanted my kids to experience that same understanding at a young age, that even as children, God calls them to serve their friends, their teachers, their neighbors, their parents, and each other. Um, And so I I had been kind of on the search for books that would help me convey that because my kiddos are still young and storytelling is a great way for them to learn some of these concepts. Um, And I I was able to pick up a couple and I kind of made an offhanded comment to my husband of, you know, I I could write a book better than that. (laughs) Um, and maybe careful with that now. Careful. Yeah. 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 He heard that comment. <laughs> yeah. And uh, he said, okay, then why don't you? And I'm like, oh, I, I don't have time for that. That's not a thing I do. Um, and then when the, the dream accelerator came around, it, it really did challenge me to think, what is a dream? And here's this random thing I mentioned one time. And I realized it really was a dream because when I, when I even think of the word dream, it makes me think of something kind of kind of far off in some sense hmm. it, and maybe hard to attain. I don't know. So I didn't have the means to accomplish that at that specific point in time. So it really, really was still a dream. Um, and the Dream Accelerator kind of helped me think through what, what could this look like? So walking into that, the idea was, could I write a book 
to help kids understand that concept of vocation. So we don't have to call it vocation in the book, but could I teach them? It's not just about um, just being a good kid, obeying your parents, but it's about like developing that heart to serve other people and that God is using them even in those small ways, the small things they're doing on a daily basis and kind of giving meaning to their world, even as a little one. So that's kind of where it, where it originated. Um, I love the idea of a rhyming scheme. So I played with that for a really, really long time. Um, and again, as, as a non-author, um, that took a little while to work out what would work for that age group. But um, really, I'm at the point where I'm committed to making my dream happen with the draft that I have. It's looking at what are my publishing options, um, who would illustrate, and what what are the steps I have to take next to really launch it um, and make it a reality in that sense. So you really started investing in your dream uh, with the Dream Accelerator, which uh, those of you who want to know more about that, you can check it out at jeffmeyer.org to know what Elizabeth is talking about here. But um, you've made some other investments along the way, both uh, in terms of time and probably financially to get to where you're at today. Can you talk about some of those investments outside of the Dream Accelerator that you have made to get this idea that seemed rather large and out there to becoming more of a now reality that you're you're gonna you're gonna do this? Mm-hmm. So what have, what kind of investments have you made? Yeah, I think one thing that comes to mind first is investments in sharing my dream, which may sound kind of silly, but I think tend to be a person who does what I say I'm going to do. So I think even verbalizing my dream Mm -hmm. made it, it was out there. Now it wasn't just in my brain. Um, And so, you know, when you tell somebody something and then you don't follow through on it, they, they might ask you about it, be curious. And so I knew investing in other people and sharing that dream, I'd get a good feel too for would people be receptive to a book like this and their general general thoughts. Um, I also spent some time investing in connecting with some other children's authors. And, you know, just tell me your general, really uh, basic rundown of, of how did you get into this? Um, who did you contact? Who do I need to be talking to? Um, there has been some monetary investment, which I think also helps that dream come to life that you're actually going to put um, not only the time but the money behind it as well. So um, Mm -hmm. I've hired an editor to look over the book, provide some ideas, kind of go back to that original draft and and play with things as well. Um, And then the the time I think has just been the other piece. Um, Of course, with a busy schedule, what's it look like to sit down and plan out that chunk and start to think of what, what, what did I think the book was going to look like? And then what's it look like now? And staying true to that as well, because as you know, you invite other people into that and your dream can take lots of different shapes or different directions. And I feel like I've, I've kind of been able to stay on track with here's the thing I want to do. And maybe, maybe it won't be this worldwide seller. Maybe it will, but this is really one I want to provide for my kids and for our, our church community or those even outside of it who want to install mm-hmm. a very similar understanding in their children. I love the, the reality of your story that, and it's very similar to other stories with entrepreneurs, inventors, authors, <clears throat> you've discovered a gap in the, in the reality of the world that there wasn't very many, if any, really good children's books about identity and vocation. Mm -hmm. And you spoke it out into the universe when you said, you know, (laughs) I could write a better book than that. (laughs) Um, But what you're saying is you discovered a gap. You discovered something that was missing, a problem that existed, and you wanted to provide a solution, if Mm -hmm. only for your own kids. Mm Mm-hmm. And so I want to just, I want to kind of put a mark on that in this conversation and remind everybody who's listening that sometimes your dream is simply uh, birthed out of a, a necessity that you see in the world that doesn't exist currently. And you know, you can do something about it. Mm-hmm. 
talk to me why it's why is that so important for your kids? Why is it so important for mama of two little ones um, to have them understand the reality of their identity, their purpose, their vocation at such an early age? Why? Why was that so important for you that you decided to venture out and write a book about it? Yeah, that's a that's a great question. I think um, because it's given me such a sense of freedom and it's something I, I didn't know about or didn't learn until I was an adult. Um, you know, so thinking about how do we serve God in his kingdom? Well, I have to be in ministry. You know, that's kind of the first thing that came to mind. I've got to work in a church. I have to do something with the youth. Um, you know, kind of this... Mm. I guess kind of preconceived notion of this is really the only work that would accomplish that. And so again, to learn the idea of a vocation and again, um, you know, my neighbor needs me to be the best at whatever I'm doing. So even the garbage truck collector, you know, that's, that's a vocation because we need our garbage picked up on a regular basis to keep our communities clean. And, And so being a really good administrator or serving students well, um, or making sure my daughter's diaper was changed in a timely fashion, you know, gave, gave meaning to like the mundane of like serving my neighbor. And, and sometimes that changed my, changes my attitude even towards my kids, you know, not that I have to do this, but I, I get to do this for them. And so I think a lot of it was just my, my personal understanding and experience that, I want my kids from a really early age to understand that the things they do, it's not, it's not about them. Um, and I think, you know, kids tend to be very self-focused and absorbed. And so if I could have them understand that God has jobs, tasks, they play a special role, you know, we're in that, that stage my kids are where they like being helpers. Um, <laughs> Hey, you're a helper. Enjoy that while it lasts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to capitalize on it with the book. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, you you play a special role and you always will, and it doesn't matter where you are. Um, so again, for them to have meaning in the mundane, to think of others outside of themselves, and to look for how can I help in this situation? And that's that's what my friend or my teacher needs. Um so I think it gives them more of a reason to do the things they should already be doing um, on a yeah. regular basis. And it's, I love the word freedom. It gave you the freedom to see that um, your vocation isn't tied into a particular job or title, mm-hmm. um, but it's in your everyday life. And uh, that you don't do that out of any obligation or, or, um, the need to please God, uh, the wait to have him smile on you, but that he's already smiled on you and you get mm-hmm. to do this from his yeah. love, not for his love. And kind of like with your kids, you know, to have them learn that you don't do these things like cleaning up your room for mommy's love, mm-hmm. but you do it because mom already loves you. Mom's always going to mm-hmm. love you, whether you clean your room or not. Yes. Um, yes. So that freedom aspect is really interesting. Uh, I look forward to seeing how the book uh, gives that gift of freedom. Uh, mm-hmm. I can't wait to hold that book mm-hmm. in my hand. Yeah. At, at the Dream Accelerator, that the yeah. world needs that book. Mm-hmm. Uh, and as a pastor myself, the church, my church needs that book. Yeah. Our families, our young families, our a lot of our adults need that book. So uh, kudos to you for pursuing Thanks. it. Um, no pressure, right? No, no pressure at all. <laughs> Your dream must live. Get it done, Elizabeth. <laughs> yeah. I got to deliver well on that. Deliver it now. Come on. It's taking you so long. No, no it's all good. Um, I remember sitting in the room with you and talking about some of the fears. It's one of the things we talk about is to name your fear. And then yeah. to change your mind about it, um, mm-hmm. when you when you first really when you came and you were thinking like, okay, I'm going to have to do this now. Someone's invested in me. Um, talk about some of your fears, yeah, uh, that you had or maybe still have mm-hmm. at some uh, in regards to writing this book. Yeah, I think 
there's probably more fears than anything. I think, again, initially it was like a fear of having a dream. So again, you know, I kind of joke about I'm a, I'm a full-time employee. I, I'm a mom. I've got a lot of other things going on. Could I even really have a dream? Does that option exist? So recognizing or, or kind of what would that open up if I even started to explore that? Um, because my priorities have been focused elsewhere. So I think that was initially just a little uncomfortable. Um, I think another fear that still exists is just producing something that's of quality, right? So right. I want to write a book for my kids ultimately. And even if I'm, I'm printing it out myself and somehow <laughs> binding it or stapling it, it's going to be on my kid's bookshelf in some way. But um, the fear or the idea that you know, I'm not an author. I don't have a background in literature. How do I write a kid's book? Um, that was totally stepping out of a comfort zone. I think, you know, the time, the process, all of that um, can be seen as, as overwhelming, which just gives you more reason to say, I don't know if I, I can do this. And it starts to to build those fears even more significantly. But I think just Again, the idea I'm going to, I'm going to do it. I want it to be something that a church can use that people would be thrilled and proud to have in their home. And I'm, I'm afraid of falling short of that because this for my kids, could I actually make it work for other people's kids too? Mm -hmm. That's a realistic fear. It's just kind of like the, the opposite is, well, my mom loves every sermon I ever preach. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I well, right. Yeah. <laughs> my kids are going to love my book. Because yeah. it's mommy's yeah. book. You know? <laughs> And I'll read it every day. They'll have it memorized. <laughs> yes. yes. You'll they try to skip pages it. late, try to skip <laughs> pages late at night because you're exhausted and they won't let you. <laughs> yes. Yes. They will know it. They will know it well. <laughs> they will know it well. Wow. So how have you moved forward anyway in spite of those fears? Do you have any kind of, as you think about that, uh, principles or um three point outline of how you yeah. move forward with fear to continue this journey and you haven't given up. What, what has been helpful yeah. to you? I really, I think what was pivotal really was the dream accelerator workshop for me um, to go into a community of other people who were dreaming really at the same level in terms of we're exploring our dreams. We're thinking through things. We're taking steps to make them a reality to know there were other people in similar positions was significant for me. And, and walking out of that to then say, okay, well now I have a community who knows my dream. So again, they're verbalized it and who's um, supportive. The, the positivity around that I think is, is huge where there's some level of affirmation of, yeah, you don't have to be a children's author to publish a book. Like there's a lot of ways you could do this. There are a lot of options you have to explore. Um, I think that gave me uh, a confidence boost. And then I think, you know, support from, from my husband, from my family as well to say, we, we know you're capable, whatever that may look like, uh, let us help support you. So really, it's probably not a three pronged approach, but I think for me, it was the sense of community and having somebody ask about it um, or being able to report back or my occasional conversations with you, like, how's it going? It's like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm still, I'm still whittling away. And then each of these little one-off conversations leads me to somebody else um, yes. having a conversation with, and I'm meeting another author because you know, you connected me with an editor and then the editor connected me with another author and, you know, your networking starts to expand and then you kind of like start to see yourself in that role of like, oh, now I'm talking to children's books or authors of, of children's books. Now I'm in the network, even though I haven't published anything. Um, yeah, it, it's kind of just overcoming that imposter syndrome to some extent. Everybody started somewhere. Uh, and this may not be the best thing I ever do, but it's my dream. And who can really criticize That's right. the dream in that sense, too? That's absolutely right. What have you learned in the process about yourself, about the world, about pursuing a dream? What have you learned? 
I've learned a lot more about publishing, which was interesting, you know, just, just that world I knew nothing about. Um, I learned that there are a lot of facets to Elizabeth Polzine that I don't always get to dip into as a, <laughs> a full-time employee. And, you know, the, 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 the mom, the wife, um, this has been like a creative outlet I've gotten to explore for myself, which has brought about a different type of excitement. And I think joy and pride in a project like that. Um, I think I've also learned, you know, as I, as I've started to share with people, um, I've, I've got somebody on staff here who has an extensive background in publishing. Like we were able to connect over that idea get some feedback. So it's also brought about some different connections. And it even, if, if I can take it this far, it even takes me back to the concept of vocation in some extent that there's again, freedom and the ability to serve in this way. So again, even if it's that like stapled pieces of paper that are, that are on my kids' bookshelves, I will have served them. Um, and that, that will satisfy me. I, if, if it can be what I truly envision it to be, I think that would be amazing well, but it almost kind of comes full circle in that way back to how can I serve? How can I share what I've learned within the Christian faith and um, help others explore that even more fully with their children too? So it's it's been energizing in ways I didn't anticipate. Um and to take my time to work through that, I feel like it's made it really manageable in that sense too. You know, I don't, I don't have a, a timeline. I've got to crank this out. I'm not a published author. I don't have editors on my back about things like that. Um, but it's been fun to explore what that looks like for me. So there is, there's growth and joy and freedom and blessing in the journey. Uh, even before that book is being held in your hand. And I, I love the open doors uh, that have come about because you took the next step, right? And if you wouldn't have taken that next step, uh, you wouldn't have been able to experience and receive all the things that you've experienced or received uh, mm -hmm. along the way. So that, that's an awesome lesson for, for each yeah. of us. I think sometimes uh, when we have that big project in mind, we don't take any steps because mm -hmm. all we can see is the end result and it's so far off mm -hmm. that we don't know how to take, all we need to do is take that next step and it will unfold for us the path that we're supposed to take, right? Definitely, definitely. Cause it's the couple conversations, you know, you get a new idea. Um, I had a conversation with a woman that I'd love to illustrate my book and even through that, it was, oh, here's how we could visualize the concept you were trying to communicate. Here's how we could make this interactive and really engaging for kids. And I mean, that excitement, it was a 30 minute conversation, but it just kind of explodes the dream mm -hmm. again and again. Um, and what that leads to continually is, is quite amazing. Or again, just like a couple questions answered opened up a whole other world to understand like the world of self-publishing. How does that work? What's that investment like? Um, how did, what's the process to becoming an author? You know, maybe it's even dreaming further. You were one of the first people to introduce me to that. Like, what if this became Sunday school curriculum? What if this became um, mm -hmm. something used in, in classrooms? And I'm like, Oh man, my dream was this little, this little book is now an even bigger thing I could explore. Um, again, I, I just think that's the aspect of community where other people start to add to your idea and it just uh, even richer in that sense. And again, it's that excitement continues to build. That, that is really good. And I mean, you work at Concordia University, Wisconsin in, a, in an Arbor, Ann Arbor, for example. So you think about how that could be incorporated in the early childhood education process for mm -hmm. your educators mm -hmm. so, yeah. my goodness uh, yeah. just, or in the uh, the religion classes or the pre mm -hmm. the pre-sem classes all the guys that are learning about full-time ministry <laughs> could learn a lot here's an easy here's an easy way to break it down yeah yes. definitely i 
in the course I teach, we talk about vocation, and I guess it would probably be a little unfair to require my own students to buy my book, but to even, you know, show that around and, um, you know, we're talking about vocation, service, citizenship. What's that even look like? With uh, Again, small children are capable of learning quite a bit, and we can set the stage for that in a, in a very early point in their lives. Why wouldn't we explore that um, as part of our, our faith? So Beautiful. So you're sitting here today somewhere between the spark of the dream, which came way before the Dream Accelerator, and the the time frame where you're going to hold that book in your hand, you're somewhere in the middle, in the mix and the the muck and the the excitement and the confusion of the middle, right? <laughs> what what would you say are your biggest needs or obstacles or challenges right now? Like that you need to take your next step. What is your very next step? And what are some of the things you need to take it? Yeah, my next step is really... Um, how am I going to fund publishing? What publisher? And then just a very logistical question. What happens first? Is it um, the illustration? You know, is that something I should do independently of a publisher or if I need to have a publisher lined up for that? Um, so it's very much so it's going to happen. It's just a matter of I'm really in a stage. How is this going to happen? And how do I start to kind of manage that as a, as a project as well. So getting everybody on the same page and knowing where do I, where do I need to head next to make it a reality? Yeah. That's, that's great. Um, where are you going to get those answers? Um, a lot of other authors. Um, and again, the, the woman I'm interested in having illustrate the book, she's done quite a few children's books as well. So, you know, it was another conversation to say, how does it typically work for you? How do you normally get paid? Um, is it through the publisher? Is it through the author? How do you like to work? Like, here's a draft of what I have. Does this even engage you? Um, so it really has been that continued networking just to learn from other people's experiences, because I think that gives me a, a context and a frame to work from. Um, because, again, that world of self-publishing, I mean, you can pay organizations to do it all for you and you, you could pay a lot of money for them to do it all for you. Or you could try to do a lot of it yourself. So exploring where is that ground for me? How much do I want to do? by myself and how much am I willing to pay <laughs> to have someone else do and, and help me out with that. So it really has been those who have some prior experience and just, yeah, what's, what's been your personal journey? How did you decide? Where did you get your information from? Um, but again, that it kind of comes back to like that community part again for me. I, I guess I go online and read all of it, but I'd much rather learn it from somebody else who's done it before. That's right. Good for you. You probably have applied some of your educators' hats in terms of doing research very yes. well. Here, <laughs> yes, That's definitely. Awesome. That's a great lesson. So there are people listening to this uh, podcast today who have an idea. They've been thinking about that idea this whole conversation. They've been processing um, how they're going to take their next step, what that's going to look like, where are they going to find that community? All these things mm -hmm. that you've been talking about, they're applying it to their own dream. What would you like to say at the end of our podcast episode here today uh, to them? What would you like to say directly to a listener today? Yeah, I think to a listener who's contemplating a next step, do you explore it? Um, I think I would say what Jeff has said to me, the world needs your dream. Um, mm -hmm. and, and how you do that are small steps. So there's no, there's no timeline besides the one that you're, you're putting on yourself. Um, so maybe you're somebody who works at a fast pace. Maybe you're a little bit at a slower pace and you need to put, put some feelers out there, kind of explore that. Um, but I just think those have been words of encouragement to me to say that, again, not only does my dream have significance to me, but again, if you're, if you're dreaming about it, it's likely that it's, it has significance to someone else. And 
you're, if you're thinking about it and you're not acting on it, what, what might we be missing out on? Um, so I would, say the, you know, move forward anyway, take that next step. The Dream Accelerator Workshop was huge for me and exploring what that would entail. And again, that was just such a, a safe space for that. So um, the world needs your dream. Mm. What are we missing out by not having it? And, and, and play with that. I mean, that's, again, maybe that's a whole different concept to you, but I love that play with that. Mm -hmm. Start to start to explore it and who knows what it could lead to. It might be much, much less daunting than we often make things out to be. Cause if it's right. a dream, there's some passion there. Um, and, and we often find joy in being able to use our skills, putting our passions to work. Um, God has wired us in that sense. So there, there's some level of responsibility we have. I guess I'd kind of leave mm. that charge, you know? Yeah, I just think about that the world will miss out mm -hmm. uh, if you don't pursue it. I, I had a client once say that they really struggled with the idea of a personal dream because it felt selfish. Yeah. And I would imagine, I would imagine as a mother, um, to think about yourself when you have two little ones think about your own dream when you have two little ones you could fall into the trap of thinking that that's selfish mm -hmm. i don't have time to think about myself i have two yes. little ones i've got to take care of mm -hmm. but it's actually kind of selfish to not bring your dream into the world because there's something that you're keeping that's going to bless keeping from blessing the world mm -hmm. or other people with your your particular dream so um think yeah. about those people that would benefit Mm -hmm. Think about the Different. mothers and the fathers and the the educators and the children that would benefit from mm -hmm. Elizabeth's dream. Now, and then think about your own. What? Who would benefit? Who's your who? Mm -hmm. And how would they benefit from it? So, thank you for that word. That is really good. Um, and that it starts with the next step. Definitely, it's not as the next step is not as daunting as the whole project. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, I think little steps at a time. And, and I love how you're even describing that. Cause I think it is easy for us to even dismiss it because we think of it as selfish. Um, but again, to explore that, I think is, is far more exciting than not. Yeah. Yeah. Elizabeth, thank you so much for taking the time today and your very busy schedule to talk with me again, about your book and your dream. And I can't wait to hold it. Uh, I want a signed copy. Yes. And I want your kids' signatures on it too. <laughs> and even your husband, if he wants yeah. to. Because uh, yeah. it's a family ordeal, this uh, mm -hmm. pursuit. It definitely is. I'm so proud of you. Um, you. I'm so excited uh, for the journey you're on. How can people uh, get in touch with you if they have questions about uh, your journey or about their own their own, their own dream. Yeah. Uh, email is the easiest way to get in touch with me, elizabeth.polzine and it's P O L Z I N at gmail.com. Uh, you can also find me on LinkedIn. I'll be sure to, to share the link with you so they can look me up that way um, right. and shoot me a message. I'm, I'm always open to conversation, learning more um, and, and helping others consider that dream too. Awesome. You were so delightful. Thank you so much uh, for the time today and uh, many, many blessings to your work and enjoyment every step of the way. Okay. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you. Hey, fellow dreamer. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Head over to my website, jeffmeyer.org for all the show notes and links. And remember, fear will come, fear will stay. Move forward anyway.